Now, I was listening to this video about a guy named David Goldberg. Now, I'm not sure if that's his real name or not. I'm not sure if you guys have heard of him or not. But this man had some knowledge, a tiny fracture, but enough to put a target on his back considering he was killed in June 8th, 2019. So not long ago, they are barely releasing notes, messages, hidden codes, or events that are planned to come, plans in the making. His friends are keeping an active channel for him and releasing research, information he had, notes, anything to share with the public that he would have brought light to. Okay, now it's about 20 minutes long, but I believe the information is important. He was uncovering operations that they plan to kill 15 million people. YouTubers, conspiracy theorists, those who are open-minded, who question the media, those who are awake basically, and he's saying that they're going to go after these people. Some of you may be asking how, because there's many of us. Well, they are doing it through targeted diseases, military op operations, etc. He says they're not going to do censorship anymore. The real goal is to eliminate these people. They are in kill mode. So you let me know what you think, give it a listen, I will give the links of the videos in the description box so you can check out yourself. Hello everyone, this is David Goldberg again. This is probably going to be one of my most important videos that I've done yet. We're going to discuss a couple of things, uh, new things that have come up. I have received uh, classified documents from my White House insider, and we also have some memos that I've referenced in the past, and I'm going to walk through everything that I've been deciphering and learning from these videos, excuse me, from the documents that I've received. So, we'll get into this. The crux of it, I want to just introduce you right, right away. What is it all about? This is it. This is what the documents reveal. There are too many people waking up. There are too many Americans, more and more of them, that are suspicious of Israel. More and more Americans aware of Zionism. This has been around for decades and decades. You go back to the 50s, 60s, there's a, a lot of literature about Zionism, about Judaism. It's not unusual, but the difference is today, more and more people are waking up to it. It's been a real tipping point where you have, you always had maybe about half a percent of the population that was aware of Zionism, uh, that did not like Jews and whatnot, but they were never part of the mainstream. They were always dismissed as conspiracy theorists. They had no influence. So they were not really a threat. But that has changed. And you know that has changed. Anyone paying attention knows that has changed. We have seen a big change in uh, comment sections on YouTube, many people making references to Zionism. It has become a part of the nomenclature through the influence of 8chan, 4chan, many, many websites, and ultimately many, many YouTube channels that have been speaking the truth very aggressively uh, for many years, but it has really gotten attention lately. It is somewhat of a uh, cumulative effect, a snowball effect, where more and more people start to wake up to the truth and the facts, and it just expands, and people become more accepting of it, and they start to say, okay, it's okay for me to look at the information. I'm not an anti-Semite for looking at it. Uh, and it, it really starts to click for people. So this has been a big change in the recent past few years. What happened is that Israel, its agents, its propagandists, have been playing very, very, very close attention to this over the past few years. They know this is happening. They are very concerned about it. We are talking about 0.5% of Americans who have some idea of Zionism and they're against it and they understand it. That number, according to these documents, is now 
about, I saw two numbers. They said 15%, and another one said 7%, but that is a very large number of Americans that are, are, have woken up to what's going on with Israel and, and Zionism and the Israeli lobby and the influence. They're unafraid to hate Israel. That number is very high, and it is them very concerned. This is much of what the classified documents talk about, but we'll get into that more. I wanted to set it up for you so you actually understand what this is really about. What I was given from the White House Insider. The main part that you really need to know, though, is they have a plan for all of this. So I'm going to talk about that now. There is discussion within these documents. Uh, years ago, to ban the YouTube channels, to shut it down, all of that. But they changed course. They made a decision to do something completely different. And they decided, instead of censoring everything, to fund and promote gatekeeper channels, shill channels, to simply gather and collect all the open-minded people who are looking at the issue. And they did shut down some of the legitimate channels, and that has actually happened. If you're following some of that, you are aware that there have been channels that have been shut down, almost completely eliminated. Some of those channels were not a part of the original gatekeeper channels. They have no connection. They are truth-telling channels. Some of those they've eliminated that they felt were a threat or that might be calling out the gatekeeper channels. So, I'm just looking through some of the documents here and seeing what I want to talk about next. One really interesting aspect of all this is that the gatekeeper channels and the shill channels, typically these would be disinfo channels. Uh, disinfo channels like Alex Jones, for example, has been a long time disinfo Zionist channel. Very, very active in dis deflecting people away from Zionism. Alex Jones talks about everything, but he never talks about Israel. So that is an active disinfo channel that's been around forever. What they created with these new gatekeeper channels is very truthful channels. They're very honest. They don't put out a lot of disinfo. They are actually legitimate. And that is done to, to give them credibility among these people who are awake, who are waking up. That was very specifically done, the documents to talk about that. Now, I'm going to talk about what is the purpose of the whole operation. And the purpose of this is to, to put out truthful channels, to attract people to them. They call it tag, track, and ID. It is a term used throughout the documents, TTID. It's something you want to remember. This is very uh, common throughout these documents. They're referred to it all the time. So what does that tell you? They want to tag. They want to track you, and they want to identify who you are. If you are watching these channels, if you are informed, if you are awake on these issues, they want to tag you, they want to track you, and they want to know exactly who you are. They want to know, and uh, it talks about the uh, tracking people's IP addresses through YouTube. They have access to YouTube. They do know who you are. So this is discussed a lot in the documents. I'm just looking through it right now. And there are two projects, and it's very important to, to li listen to this. Project Pogo is one of them, and Project Zypher. I will spell that one. Z-Y-P-H-R. Project Pogo and Project Zypher are... The two projects uh, that the classified documents are referring to, and each has a different role. Project Pogo is about the YouTube gatekeepers, how they are all agents. They are all paid to put 
out truthful information so that they can tag, track, and ID the people that are watching the videos and giving them likes and giving them comments. They're tracking all of it. Project Zypher is a different project, and that's what I'll talk about in a bit. That is the second stage here. That is coming up, and that is the extermination. They're going to exterminate these people, whether it is tag them for anti-Semitic speech, charge them with crimes, eliminate them completely, and this is where I'll talk about in the documents where they talk about guillotines, viral attacks targeted, how they're going to eliminate these people without too much suspicion, without too many people noticing. But here's the problem. As I read the documents, I can see I have documents from four years ago, I have documents from two years ago, and then I have documents from three months ago. So there's a progression in the timeline as the projects change. And Project Zypher has changed. In the beginning, they have been talking, they were talking a lot about, okay, we are going to infect these people with a virus that uh, imitates the flu virus. They're going to eliminate them in various ways that would not be suspicious. In the, in the documents I have now from three months ago, they are saying the amount of people they have to eliminate is too large. It is too many. We are talking about millions of Americans. And this is where we see their plans are changing. And they are going to initiate something that is devastating and that is extremely frightening. And based on what I can see in the documents, we're talking about power outages along with a purge. They're going to come in, they're going to take you out of your home, and they're going to put you into a uh, military vehicle or whatever, a van, and drive you away and place you into a camp. It is a very, very big operation that they're planning. It is millions of Americans. They will do it under the cover of night, under the cover of blackness, during one of these planned blackouts. The blackouts are based on documents. I'm, gonna, I'm just looking at it right now. They have a three-day blackout. They have a nationwide blackout that lasts two days and a lot of localized blackouts. So it is a whole series of blackouts that they're going to do. And, of course, it will be blamed on all kinds of things. They might blame it on Iran. I have seen that mentioned in the documents. They've already prepped people for this. There are going to be more blackouts. There are already uh, predictive programming. So we may see more of this uh, as we go on. As far as I can tell from Project Zephyr, or Zephyr, they are planning this next year and the year after. They are not done tagging, tracking, and identifying everyone. I, it looks like they're at about 78%. I looked in the documents, and there were a couple of indications of how long, far along they feel in the project is. They're like 78% done but they're not completely done. It, it does take time to identify a, a YouTube account and then track it to the email that it was created with and then the IP address and then find out who created it. It does take them a lot of time to do that. It is not instant. It does take a lot of research because a lot of people create a YouTube account with a, an email address that doesn't give any indication of who they are. Uh, an account name that doesn't have their full name on it. They don't use their real pictures. So it is a challenge for them. That's why the project has been going on for so long. But it is coming to a close. In the next six months to a year, it appears it is coming to a close. And that is when Project Zypher will be initiated. So I have some notes here. I'm going to continue on and talk a little bit more about Right. They're being tracked. They're being identified. That's the whole point. A lot of people have said, well, why are some of these YouTube channels allowed to exist? Why are they allowed to so openly talk about the truth? And 
And some of you might know uh, Adam Green, uh, No More News, and there are a whole bunch of others, and they're very, very open about Zionism, and they're very honest about it, and they're telling the truth. I mean, they are telling the truth. They're not hiding anything. They're not disinfo. They're not putting disinfo out there. But as far as I know, they are part of, I mean, they're all a part of this operation. I can't spe say specifically if Adam Green is a part of it or not, but I would assume possibly he is. He has probably been guaranteed a lot of money. He's probably been promised a lot of things. He's probably, he could be a Freemason. He could be a part of their operation. He could be an agent. I don't know. But I have no idea. It's total speculation on my part. I have no idea. All I know is this is part of the operation, what they want to do. His channel would fit into the MO. It is an example I'm giving. He is there to tag, track, and ID. Not him specifically, but the people behind the operation who are doing all the research and all the people who are commenting and viewing and liking. They want to know who they are. They want to know where they live, and they are going to eliminate them at a date in the future. Completely eliminate them. This is going way beyond the idea of passing laws to ban speech, which they're already doing. They've done it in America already, but not very aggressively, and we will see more legislation of that nature. But they want to completely eliminate these people because they do stand in the way of the agenda. There are too many people that are waking up. It is way too many for them to handle. They're starting to have an influence, and they're starting to change the conversation online. It is of great concern to Israel. Something that the memos that I received, we'll talk a little bit about the memos. The memos are different from the classified documents. The memos are White House internal memos that discuss a wide range of things in terms of Trump's meeting with rabbis, uh, discussions with Netanyahu over the phone. And one of the memos says that Donald Trump will have to declare himself king of Israel publicly. This is part of the process for them. It, it doesn't, there's no strategic reason for it. It is symbolic for them. Trump is going to declare himself king of Israel at some point. I don't know how, but they're talking about it in these memos over and over again. When he's going to do it, why, he want, why they want him to do it, which again is symbolic. It has no strategic purpose, apparently. It is part of the process of, what, of the end game, basically is what I'm saying. So we will see if that happens or not. It, will, it sounds ridiculous. I can't imagine him actually saying it. But maybe he will do something like that. We will look out for that uh, in, the, in the coming months. Uh, based on my reading of the classified documents on the memos, so much of what is going on is planned. They've given people the impression that Trump has brought chaos to politics, but it's actually the opposite. It has been planned. Donald Trump's allegiance is to Israel. He's not only a Jew, he is a Freemason. They have promised him his daughter, the sons, will enjoy very high level ranking within the world government that they are forming, the capital which will be Jerusalem. So that is why Trump is so dedicated to following the script, while performing the way that he does. It appears to be very authentic to his followers. Everything he's done, talking about the wall to the fake news, was scripted from the beginning around 2014 and 2015. And according to some of the memos I'm reading, he loved it. They introduced all of this to him and he loved it. They told him the plan, you're going to become president, you're going to say this and this and this. He loved it. He's already a little bit of a racist. He's already predisposed to some of this rhetoric. So he loved it. He jumped on board. And they promised him great things, especially for his family, if he were to follow through on these things and simply follow their script. And he does have leeway. He has leeway to say many things that he wants to say. He has a lot of fun doing this, but he does have scriptwriters and uh, 
Uh, the, uh, the, there's one of the script writers, I forget his name, he's, uh, he's bald guy, uh, oh, I want to remember his name, it's important to say it, um, well, he is a big part of this, he writes a lot of the Trump's tweets, he crafts a lot of it, oh, I cannot remember, I'm, oh, I'm going to have to look him up right now, oh, Trump's speech writer, Stephen Miller. Stephen Miller has a big role in all of this. He's a dedicated Zionist. He has a lot to do with a lot of this. If you want to go down the rabbit hole, if you want to find out who's really behind it, Stephen Miller is a big part of it. So that is the, the whole of it. I want to get this video out. I want people to hear it. I want people to know what's going on. Uh, I've had some strange things going on in my house. I've noticed some black SUVs. I mentioned it before. They're still there. I still see them every once in a while. The other day, I went out to try to approach one, to confront them. Like, what are you doing here? I know you're here. And they drove off. As I could be right when I open the door, and I look outside, I see them drive off. So I don't know, maybe it's just coincidence that they were leaving and they saw, I don't know. But it seemed like they were very, very prepared to get out of there. So the next time I see them, I'm going to confront them quickly and make sure that they don't have time to get out of there before I have a chance to get down there and at least they see me coming for them. I will try again. But I have seen them mostly at night. I open the window, I look out the window, and that is when I see them mostly that's all I want to confront them. I'm tired of the harassment. I know they're watching me. I assume I'm bugged. I assume there's some way to hear what I'm saying, but I don't care anymore. I have been given the documents. I have been tasked with, with, with this duty to get the information out. I'm going to do it in any way that I can. I have given my friends copies of all of these. I have stored them in different places. I have a dead, dead man switch in case something were to happen to me. So I've done my best to prepare because I feel like this is getting very serious. I mean, the documents they show me are terrifying. The plan that they have in place. I would expect they have this plan of gatekeeping and tracking people, but they're going to take it to a new level with Project Zypher. They're going to take it to a new level. They're going to exterminate these people. One by one, through the blackouts. I mean, it says in the class of the documents they're planning to pick them up. They're just going to physically pick them up. They're also going to use all kinds of other means to eliminate them. Not just the high value targets are going to be picked up. The lower value targets will be given viruses, targeted viruses that activate either right away or over time. They don't want it to be too obvious that all of a sudden a whole bunch of Americans get sick. Of course, there will be official stories in the news media. Okay, there's a flu outbreak, which indicates to me this will probably happen in winter. Not this winter, but possibly the winter of 2020, 2021. From what I'm reading from the documents, that is the timeline. It is not specific, but that is where I feel it's going to be, because they want, it to, uh, they want to do a flu outbreak, and it will make sense in one term, people won't question it. They have to eliminate a lot of people, I mean, a lot of people, high value, high value of targets. It's going to be so many people that disappear that people will ask questions, so they have their cover stories, and they're getting them ready, and they got them in place. If this were a few hundred thousand people, they could do it, but it is millions and millions of Americans that they want to eliminate. I think it's 15 million. Based on what I'm reading in these documents and some of the numbers they've used, which has not been totally specific about it, but it looks like 15 million, but it could even be more. They want to eliminate them completely, completely. Because it's becoming a problem 
and it has been a problem for a few years, and this is their solution to it. In addition to that, they want the world government, they want all of these plans to move forward. They cannot have opposition because the things that are going to happen are going to be very, very radical. You're going to see the dissolution of the United States of America. You're going to see world leaders and the media endorsing something that is so crazy. And that is the dissolution of the United States of America and, and the endorsement of a world government seated in Israel. A lot of Americans aren't going to accept that, but they have to eliminate the people who are going to call out what's really going on. From my reading of the documents, how they're going to roll all of this out and justify the dissolution of the United States and many other countries as well, it appears their plan is to do all countries at once is going to be under the cover of financial collapse. Well, we have to do the world government. We're all going to die because the financial system is broken down. That is something that is talked about in the classified documents. That ultimately will be the cover story after they do the purge and eliminate the dissidents, the people who are woken up to Zionism. There will be a total financial meltdown, and they will say, look, we have to do the world government. We have to come together. We have to create this new currency. We have no choice. The chaos is too serious. It will be probably six months of complete financial chaos, uh, food shortages, uh, rise in crime. Many, many people will die. Uh, millions and millions of people will also die from this. And then they will justify it and say, look, we have to do the world government. So that is what's going on. I'm about done. I'm going to do another video. I have more things coming up. I have a lot more planned because there's more in the documents that I need to discuss. I'll be back with another video soon. Thank you for listening, and I'll do more soon.